get boom, 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 gotta get get boom. Hello and welcome to our podcast on another great literary term that is called onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia. Yes, hard to say, difficult to spell, but I think once you get into it, you can see it's not really all that challenging to understand what it is. Well, let's go ahead and find out what we're talking about. First off, what is onomatopoeia? This is when we have words that imitate or suggest the source of the sound that it describes. So in short, they are words that sound like sound. So buzz, crackle, zing, tink, things like that, that you can almost hear a musically created sound from them. If you try to put those into writings or into poems, those become the use of onomatopoeia. Now some people will also include, and I'm one of these, will include other sense words. So words that somehow create the sense of feeling. So rough or scratched or something like that that creates a sense of feel. Or you could also have that sense of taste to really help the reader understand what this feels like or tastes like or sounds like. So if you're using words that attend to the different senses, then those could all be considered onomatopoeia. So why is this important? Well, you've got the writers who are trying to create images in the reader's head by adding that sense of sound or feel or taste. It oftentimes creates some sort of musical quality because you can actually hear things while you're reading, not just moving your eyes over the piece of paper. And needless to say, this is going to draw attention to those words. And since we're in a literature class, we not only read for entertainment, for enjoyment, but we are always looking for the deeper theme of all of these pieces. And so a writer might be using onomatopoeia to create attention on certain sections of the poem, and those certain sections are exceptionally important in revealing the theme or the lesson of that poem. And so that tends to be why onomatopoeia is used, is always moving the reader towards an understanding of theme. So some quick examples, you know, the Rice Krispies ads, if you still see those, Snap, Crackle, and Pop. Those are the names of the three little character dudes, but those are also sound words. When you pour milk into Rice Krispies, that kind of is what they sound like. And so if you can take that sound and write it down in the words of snap, crackle, and pop, maybe you can sell a couple more boxes of this, grab people's attention. And so it creates this comic effect, but also creates a lot of sound words in the written advertisement for this. Definitely, if you're reading comic books or seeing some comic-type movies, you're going to hear the sounds of those written out into words, you know, kapow, bam, that kind of stuff. I mean, what does it sound like when the good guy hits somebody in the face? How do you make that sound into a word? When you are, that is onomatopoeia. Now, Marvel Comics with Iron Man, Captain America, etc., they tended to use a different set of words. And so you get you know, some comics using pow and kablam, others using thwip, swoosh, and clang to try and replicate what would that sound like of some sort of maybe a bullet or something, a metal hitting on Captain America's shield. Trying to capture those sound words into actual writing. And that again is onomatopoeia. So here we go, short clip from the 1966 movie of Batman during the classic fight scene. See how they cross over between the comic book, onomatopoeia, and then film. And then a goofy example from another movie called Nothing to Lose. Notice how they are trying to create the imagery around sound and around confusion with the words from this song. Some examples from contemporary music. You know, we've got the Black Eyed Peas, Boom Boom Pow, and you can see the lyrics there. Go ahead and take a minute and pause this podcast and see if you can find which words would be the examples of onomatopoeia. Like, where are they trying to capture the sound of the bass in writing?
And here's what we came up with, all of the booms kind of replicating the sound of a bass drum or some sort of bass sound in the music. Here's another example from Kesha, or as they say on Glee, Ke Dollar Sign Ha, her song Tick Tock. Do you see any onomatopoeia in there? Go ahead and pause this while you find it. And you can see that she uses the words tick tock on the clock, but the party don't stop, no. But yes, we're using onomatopoeia. So what does the clock sound like? I mean, if you hold your watch up, if you have one of the old watches that actually makes noise, what does it sound like? Well, she's trying to replicate that in writing by using the words tick tock. Let's move into a little bit more formal writing here. Here we have Edgar Allan Poe's poem, The Bells. So let's go ahead and pause this and see if you can find any words that are using onomatopoeia to capture either sounds or tastes or something like that. And here's what we came up with. The repetition of tinkle, tinkle, of time, and then toward the end of bells, 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 and jingling and tinkling of the bells. And you can kind of sat hear what that sounds like with the repetition of those. And you can actually feel maybe the sound of the different bells in his poem. And then one more here, Honky Tonk in Cleveland, Ohio by Carl Sandburg, another famous American poet. Go ahead and pause this and see if you can see any examples of onomatopoeia. And so here's what we came up with. The trombone pony neighs and the tuba jackass snorts, cartoonists weep. And so others of these words may strike you as sound words that didn't strike us, and that's okay. But the point is which words are trying to capture sound in just straight up writing. And if so, those are going to be onomatopoeia. So that's about it. As always, if you have any questions, please go ahead and bring those into class. But file this new literary term away in your toolbox as we attack poems and writings of all kinds. And remember, the reason they're probably using onomatopoeia is not only to create that musical feel, but to get your attention to a certain area to help reveal theme. So as always, if you have any questions, bring those in. Thanks for listening, and we will see you soon.